listening to the Hollywood Boulevard podcast. Yeah, and welcome to the wild, wild west of space. This is Alfred Crane, my friend Jonathan Moody, and Hollywood Boulevard podcast. Hey, what's up, Alfred? Alfred, How you doing? Not much. I heard you want to talk about Serenity tonight. Oh, Firefly! Firefly. Yeah, (laughs) Serenity was the movie. Firefly. Yeah, that's right. No, which I liked both. Same here. It's been a while since I watched them, so it's good to go back and read about them and um i've had a lot going on so i haven't had a chance to watch the shows and i just remember they were such a freaking awesome series for 13 episodes it was just like when it took me years to watch it because people kept talking about it and talking about it well technically yeah. there's 14 episodes because one was the pilot that never aired yeah. um that they still have in the they actually if you go to hulu uh it shows that pilot uh serenity it's called um oh, wow. as the the first uh one which is what it should be train job or i think it's train job should be second um uh-huh. and uh they switch uh, from what i've understood they've switched them because fox didn't like the original pilot because uh-huh. it was uh it just it wasn't action-packed it wasn't it was that the characters were too uh you know they, they backed down too much and they weren't you know these you know whatever so they made them go in a room and rewrite it you know okay well so, yeah. glad they did because it turned out to be one hell of a show well yeah i'm glad that fox sort of agreed to let them air it you know but fox mm-hmm. really i don't think fox really liked it you know no i think from what I, did, well back then when the shows would Switch time slots a lot. That was a kiss of death. Yeah. When it started bouncing around. When it started bouncing around, yeah, it was it was it was almost like you're you're done. <laughs> right. Got quite a cast, I'll tell you. Um I remember when I first watched it, I mean, um I had um Nathan Fillion and um Marina Bacaran and, and the guy who played um book was on Barney Miller. I love him. Right. Um it's an amazing show. Ron Glass, and, yeah, I played Buck. Ron Glass. And, yeah, Adam Baldwin. I, Adam Baldwin from My Bodyguard. I mean, yeah, how and can Full Metal you? Jacket. And Full Metal Jacket. That's right, Full Metal Jacket too. I keep forgetting he was in that. Um, what a you know what a fantastic cast. Uh, but Nathan Fillion wasn't a star then. You know, this show no, sort of wasn't. made him a, a star. You know, which was great. Just like. Uh, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller wasn't a star in uh, before Buffy, you know, sort of made her uh-huh. one. So Joss Whedon liked to take people who weren't who aren't big stars yet and sort of make them big stars. Right, he did on Buffy and what else did he do? Buffy the Vampire Slayer and then this. And then he yep yeah, he did Buffy, then he did Angel, then he did this, then he did um, Dollhouse and a few other shows. Yeah. You know, right. um, he's done the, the recent one he did was called The Nevers on uh, HBO, but I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. I didn't know he did that. That one looked interesting. Yeah, well, he's been kicked off the uh, show, sadly, his own creation. So I don't know if they'll ever have a season two, right, or not, because uh, he got in some trouble with the the Justice League thing and. Ooh. Yeah, situation. I don't know if you heard about that, but the, we could probably no. get into all that later because right. there was actually stuff on set of Firefly that got announced that was not appropriate. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, we'll get into that later to talk about it, like toward the end. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. Um, okay, by the way, Joe, uh, Joe just sent me a message. Um, he did? Uh yeah, so right now is a, like a really rough time for him, so he can't make it for this episode. But right. he will be back. He'll he's planning to be back later. Um, I just wanted to make mm-hmm. sure he uh, when I put my, when I sent him a message, make sure he knew, you know, um, that uh, you know that we'll be back later, and you know, and, and whatnot mm-hmm. with him. But he's not going through a great time, so everybody, uh, just you know, um, say your prayers and other stuff and and well wishes for for joe and his family and and stuff that Uh he's going through right now you heard all about that i'm sure so no right uh alfred oh (laughs) i feel like i lost you for a second 
Sorry about that. No, yep, that's okay. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm so, I'm sad that he's going through this tough time. He's, he's a valuable part of our team, and it's almost like we have we have one third of our bodies. We have a leg and a chest gone. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. But he'll be back. He'll be back next season. You know, that's his plan. Um, so uh, why why did you pick this uh, show for for the season? I put it off watching it for so long because like, no. So episode here and there, but I didn't quite get into it, and it was just way too hyped, and it, and um, I just wasn't sure what to think about it. And then uh, I did some reenacting for a long time. And one of my good friends, Ryan Henry, Ryan Henry, shout out to him. He um, talked me into watching it, and he said, "You should really take a Firefly." I said, "Okay." My friend Gary Smith always talked about it, and um, then right, well, it was on Netflix at the time. I just started watching it. Oh my God, it's really good. Oh my God, it's really good. It's only for 14 episodes, but I better slow down because even when I binge watch shows that are like 10 episodes in a season, like on The Expanse or other shows, like um, 14, and that's it. It's mm. like um, it's like a fine wine. You know, you, you don't want to drink it all, but damn, it's good. You're right. Yeah, you don't, want, you don't want to drink it up too quickly. And then yet you can't help it, you know, when you're watching these things. Um, it's just basically what it says. It's like the old West in space. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, which was pretty neat. Um, but you know, if you think about like, you know, it takes a lot of tropes from like Star Trek and, and mm-hmm. uh, Star Wars and and all those different space operas, you know. Right. I mean, but it, it it brings something new to it. Um uh I wanna read you what uh Joss Whedon said about um uh when he created the show like what was his um uh uh let's see when uh <clears throat> origin when uh we didn't develop the concept for the show after reading the killer angels by michael Sh- uh, shara chronicling wow. the battle of gettysburg during the mm-hmm. american civil war he wanted to follow people who had fought on the losing side of the, of a war, their experiences afterwards as pioneers and immigrants on the outskirts of civilization, much like a post-American Civil War era reconstruction in the American Old West. He intended the show to be a stagecoach kind of drama, and a lot of people trying to figure out what their lives, uh, figure out their lives in a bleak uh, pioneer environment. Pioneer. Right. Uh, we didn't wanted to develop a show that was tactile nature of life, a show where existence was more physical and more difficult. Uh, we didn't also read a book about Jewish partisan fighters uh, in World War II uh, or Parisian fighters in World War II. Um, uh, we didn't wanted to create something for the television that was more character driven and gritty than most American uh, science fiction, uh, 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 television science fiction, he felt, had become too pristine and rarefied. Uh, Whedon wanted to give the show a name that indicated movement and power that felt that Firefly had both. This power uh, were words, uh, uh, powerful words, relatively insignificant meaning. Whedon felt uh, added to its allure he eventually created a ship in the image of a firefly. That's, a, that's an awesome ship, too. Oh, yeah. Mm. I've wondered, I put this a science fiction ship shirt, and it had everything with firefly on it. One of my friends said, if I didn't get a firefly, it incomplete. And I was like, you're right about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love uh, what they just said about that, because, like, it did feel that way. You know, mm-hmm. it felt like it was a it was a different show than what, you know, um, the most science fiction like Babylon five or, or yeah. whatever, you know, we're trying to do because a lot of them were just trying to mimic star Trek. Right. Um, they were trying to give that, um, feeling of, of doing an, another version of star Trek. Um, you know, obviously all those star Trek at the shows like deep stars, mm-hmm. deep star nine or whatever. Deep Space Nine, yeah. Deep Space Nine, sorry. Deep Star Nine was probably a porno or something. <laughs> probably the porno version. I'd watch yeah. that. I mean, why not? You know. Um, 
but yeah so it was yeah so anyway uh i thought that was when i when i read that i was like okay i gotta make sure that gets said because that's exactly what you know the show was about yeah i really am pleased with how how they did it and um every show was just solid good writing the characters were awesome and they didn't have to go into all this exposition about everybody i mean you just they just you learned who they were as you went it's not like we're space cowboys and we're doing this just like oh they're doing this. oh wow that's cool exactly like i didn't even think of them really as cowboys most of the time they didn't it didn't feel completely like the old west you know no like nobody talked like the old west nobody it, it it didn't it had the western feel at times especially if they went to like a saloon type thing you know um which if you think about star wars what does that have you know the cantina which yeah is very much a saloon you know well, uh, all these shows kind of do that they kind of or, or movies or whatever that these are based off of so i mean I don't know. I really, really, really enjoyed uh, Firefly as a whole, you know. Um, and I'm very sad that Fox decided to kick it off. Yeah, there was a, a while there. I think they, were, they kept having these pe- mailing campaigns, and oh, they were going to do it, and it just they couldn't get the people together or something. For what? To like bring it back? Yeah, I kept hearing rumors all the time. Every year, a rumor would surface in Comic Cons, and then people. Uh-huh. St- I mean, I was very happy that they did Serenity, you know, the movie. Yeah. Because at least it tied up stuff that they were probably planning to tie up uh, in the second season. Um, I don't know if you ever watched, like, Big Bang Theory. I did for a while, yeah. There was an episode where, like, uh, Sheldon... uh, uh, Sheldon was really upset because there was a TV show. uh, I forgot what it was. Alpha? That got canceled? Yeah by uh sci-fi and then like first season or something or one of the seasons first or second season or whatever mm-hmm. so you want to know what was going to happen the next season because they left it on a cliffhanger and uh and whatnot and then when he found out what you know he finally got the number the phone number to the uh to one of the writers you know mm-hmm. or the writer that was going to write for the you know the show uh he explained to him over the phone what the next season was going to be it was like now i see why you got canceled bye <laughs> but like the thing was like we kind of live in this era where um i guess we're so lucky now that like everything's netflix or whatever like they usually just buy the first season of something you know mm-hmm. they should never no tv show should ever leave you hanging no definitely I mean, not because it, there's always the chance that it won't come back for another season <laughs> Right. I mean, so what is it? Breaking Bad had that problem. Like they thought uh-huh. they were going to wrap it up in the third. I think it was the th- third or fourth fourth season, and then, uh-huh. you know, it was fourth season, and then they brought it back for a fifth. So they had to like they they wrapped it up. They get all mm-hmm. done. They thought it was done, and then they wrapped it up, and they had to do a whole new season. And right. that's I, I'm I wish I never watched that season, honestly. I did not like the, the last season of uh Breaking Bad because it just to me it just ruined everything that the, the last season had uh had just like you know finished, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, it did so, end on a bang though, it was pretty cool, but it did kind of well I was just at least it wasn't like a Game of Thrones ending, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well that that was rushed. That ending was rushed. They were trying to, uh, they were trying to basically tie everything up and whatever, and they didn't have a, they didn't have enough um, episodes to tie everything up. They they needed more episodes, but they they just you know rushed everything, and it just it felt right. that way, you know. You know, you know, you see these like movies and TV shows. You know, like they have only three episodes left. And you're like. How the hell are they gonna? How the hell are they gonna like connect everything? And then right. they do in like two, you know, two seconds basically, and it just yeah sucks. The Star Trek Next Generation had a bad habit of doing that. Each episode would be like, "How are they gonna get this?" Is five minutes left? And then you get like trouble, trouble. And then like the last two minutes, Wesley comes in and saves the ship or something. 
<laughs> Deus Ex Machina comes in and just saves the yes. day. And, or Deus, uh, oh, when we press this button here. Oh, yeah. That'll do it. Ugh, so annoying. I hate that crap. You know, because, uh, yeah, let me press this button and then the world will be saved. Well, yes. why didn't you just do that two episodes ago? Oh, right. I, I, we just remembered we have to end this episode right now. Like, we have to end the season somehow, you know? Yeah. Like, it's 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 bull crap because um, if people had more shit planned out, a lot of times these shows are written week by week, you know, not over time. But if they had it all already planned out, you know, and everything, it, shows would be a lot better, I feel like. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of hard to do that, I guess, you know. Um, because, you know, they have to, they have to do the shows when they can, can release them, you know? Right. Uh, that's what I get. I get mad about law and order SVU all the time. Right. You know, cause they, I just feel like they're writing in as they go. <laughs> right. That's a, a lot of shows have that problem. Um, the one thing with Babylon five, J. Michael Straczynski had it all written out about it was going to flow. I think the thing he didn't have was that the last season they added in. Which I don't think he wanted, but they made him do it because TNT. So that's another story for another day. Did you know he wrote for the real Ghostbusters? Yes. I did not know that till recently. I was like, oh, that's, that's a big name for the real I Ghostbusters. A, I know because I found out recently they had a, a YouTube video on the, the show. And I remember watching the cartoon. And that are, you, are, you, are you talking about the toy one? Yeah. Yeah, I watched that one. Too. That's where I saw it. Okay. Yeah, it was awesome. That's funny. Yeah, it was. It was interesting. I didn't. Uh, there was so much information on the real Ghostbusters that even I, as a huge fan of that show, didn't didn't realize. Mm. You know, and everything. That feels like at some point we should do a. <laughs> we should I think so. Do an episode on the real Ghostbusters, um, but that'll be another. That'll be another time, another season. Um, but for this one. So, so you didn't watch it originally, and so mm-hmm. you, you and I were one of the many people that didn't watch this movie that failed it. You know, um, I just I, I think it failed when it was on Fox. You know, yeah. Like I think Buffy was originally on Fox, and then they gave it to like, or they sent it, they sent it to the WB, you know, or whatever, and then that became a big hit. Um, and yeah. so Fox wanted another big hit from him so he did firefly and i guess they they weren't i don't think they were 100 percent on it like about it or whatever mm-hmm. they didn't like lots of people they don't get it yeah a lot of people aren't big fans of the show too like um i mean there are a lot of fans don't get me wrong but there are a lot of people who just don't get it or don't like it you know right um and that's that's cool like that's fine but like i love it like I don't know. Let's talk about the characters. Yeah. So who's your favorite character on the show? I like the engineer. Which which one? Uh, Kaylee? Um, yeah. Oh, she's sweet. I love her too. Um, Jewel State sure. uh, is her real name. You know, the actress's name. And she was in a show that I love to death called the LA Complex. You got to see that. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Um, sure. I'd, probably, I'd probably say overall book is my favorite. And then her book and her. Yeah. Yeah. When I was watching the pilot again recently, I just love their first interaction together, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought it was hilarious that basically they were all asked to come on board the ship when um <laughs> like they were stealing cargo. You right. Know? So there were thieves already and they were on that ship. And of course they bring uh uh, Summer Glau's River, um, right. River Tam on the show, you know, on, on board. They don't even know it. Like a stowaway. Right. You know. Um, Who's your then, favorite? Mm, that's a good question. I think I like Wash the most. Yeah. Um, mainly because it's a comic relief, which makes it good at times, you know. Uh-huh. I was really I was really sad in Serenity. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing we can, since we're talking about Firefly, we can mention Serenity stuff. But, like, you know, I, I loved his character so much that when he and uh, Book died, I was just like, yeah. oh, I can't believe it. Like, how dare they? Like, the, you know, which they did it specifically because 
uh, they knew that you would not, you know, that, that this is a movie that you had no idea if uh, who would die, if anybody what else would die, you know? Yeah. It would have been sad. I, saw, I actually saw the movie before I saw the TV series. Oh, did you? Before, yeah. So the movie like 2000, when it came out, like 2005, then it was like 10 years later when I saw the series. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. The movie was good. Um, I saw it in the theater, yeah. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I got to see it in the theater. I remember that because I think I had discovered it on, like, after it, like, I, I don't believe I watched it when it came out, even though I was a big Buffy fan at that time. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember it came out, I was living in um, a, a, a house, you know, and I remember going to the theater in 2005 and watching um, uh, the movie Serenity, mm-hmm. and and I had loved. I actually really liked the TV show, but by, by then, uh, so I think I had discovered it on Netflix, mm-hmm. um, or so, or whatever it was that it was on. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love the series, and then uh, watched that movie and, and fell in love with the movie. And I mean, to me, Joss can. You know, Joss could do no wrong as a writer. Yeah, he's great. And one thing that was funny about the, about the show was I noticed that they were using the, the Alliance costumes were kind of familiar. And said, oh, they're the old Starship Trooper leftover costumes. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Is that, do you think that's what it was? Yeah, they, it's, I, it is. I was talking to my friend Gary. Said, yeah, that's what it was. They had a lot of the Starship Trooper stuff next to where they're producing the show. So they're just like, here you go. Here's leftover Starship yeah. Trooper. That's yeah. funny. I did not know that. Uh, interesting. <laughs> they did look like it, so I, I get it. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love that. Um, so what was your favorite episode? Do you remember? Um, not off the top of my head. I like the one where they were on the, 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 the planet where it was like the Alliance planet. They had a Break in and break out. That was a good one. I can't remember the name of that one. If you look, um, I probably I would say I I would say the original pilot was my favorite, um, mm-hmm. but uh, mainly because fucking um, one of my favorite actors is in that episode, which is uh, uh Mark Shepard played Badger. Oh yeah, 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 Mark. Yeah, yeah. I um, forgot about that. Yeah, and so I'm trying to think of what would be my second favorite because I there was one I, I'm trying to remember which one I really really liked. Um, uh, let's see, I think it wasn't war stories. I'm I'm not really a big fan of the war stuff, you know. Like when they do like flashbacks to uh, Mal and. Um, and uh zoe being um in the war and stuff it just was never my thing but um uh i like the one with um the lady from uh um, mad men i'm not sure which one that is yeah uh, are you talking about melinda clark uh, yes, I believe so. The Hearts of Gold episode when a companion trained friend of Inara's who runs a brothel on a remote planet calls for help from Serenity when a local reveals his intentions to take the baby from a woman he impregnated. No, wasn't that one. Okay, <laughs> then that's not what I'm... Then that's... Uh, oh my goodness. People are going to be like, why are we listening to this? Yeah. Oh, my God. Larry Drake was in an episode. Wow. Fucking Dr. Giggles himself. I just did a whole podcast on him on 90s horror. You know, on Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles. We had a co-worker we called Dr. Giggles. (laughs) There you go. Oh, yeah. And Badger was in that episode, too. That's funny. Um. I don't know. I don't know which one you're referring to. Yeah, neither. 
I have to have a part two to this because I need to probably watch the episodes again to talk more about it. Specifically, yeah. Um. Oh wow! Holy cow! Doug Savant was in an episode too. Yeah. Oh, the one with the cattle. I like to say that was a good one. The one what? They deliver the cattle. On the cattle over the ship and they're making a mess over the place. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I, it's been a while. I, I got to remember. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't rewatch all the episodes too. That's a bad, bad, you know, yeah. research. But um, it's just it's been a busy, busy week, month, year. You know, yeah. Like, shit's been crazy. It's it's hard to like, you know, watch these things and know. Um, but. Let's see. I mean, there were 14 episodes, 13 plus the pilot that the unaired pilot. Um, it it went from uh, it, it aired September uh, 20, 20th, 2002 to uh, July 28th, 2003. And I'm guessing... Yeah, so that's weird. Hold on. And saying that August fourth. Oh, the, okay. So, the it only I guess it only aired like, um, ten episodes before it like um, and then it showed and then it aired the uh, pilot. I'm guessing it says it aired the pilot on December twentieth, two thousand two, but then. What? In the remaining three episodes came out on the DVD release. Yeah, all of them came out on the DVD release. But see, mm-hmm. they had filmed like three extra episodes. I think they filmed a whole season. But, uh, you know, Fox didn't... Uh, and I don't even understand that. Like, okay, if you put all your money into the shows, you know, mm-hmm. right? Um, And then you're airing almost all of them anyway... Why don't mm-hmm. you just tear all of them like that, you know, and then just say, right. well, I guess it didn't do well, but at least we aired them, you know, so people it, could see them. Was some aired out of order? I think so. So I was looking at it going, this is just strange. Like, actually, it didn't. So the way it says on IMDb, the train job episode was the first one aired, right? Then Bushwhacked on September 27th. Then Our Mrs. Rental Reynolds on October 4th. Uh, then another, the next episode was until October 18th with Janestown. October 25th with Out of Gas. November 1st for Shindig. November 8th for Safe. Number, uh, uh, November 15th for Ariel. No, uh, December 6th. So they, you know, they, and that's that's the thing with um, primetime shows, right? Like uh, Fox or NBC or ABC or something. They tend to kind of take little breaks, you know, a couple of day, a couple mm-hmm. weeks off or whatever, maybe even a month off, and then they'll, you know, air another episode, right? Uh, yeah. So that one had a little break, uh, December, um, December sixth, then December thirteenth. And then December 20th was the last episode that aired on Fox, I believe. And that was the surrender. That was the pilot. So that was like, I guess they were just doing it out of respect to like, just get it shown, you know? Yeah. But then episodes 12, 13 and 14, I guess didn't probably air at all. Cause it says aired August 4th, 2003 and July 21st and July 28th. But I, that sounds like out of order, but that wasn't even what um yeah, that was like the next that was the next year. So they must have done it as repeats or something. Yeah. It was weird. Like in syndication or something. Yeah, when they were in syndication. Which, you know, and then it was I, I'm guessing because those were all on the DVD, so people are already seeing them, so they just put them out so people could see them on Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, but that's just that's just weird because it says tr- the 13th episode came out on July 21st. The uh, 14th episode came out July 28th. 
And then the uh, 12th episode came out August 4th. So that's the last one to be aired was like the 12th mm. and not the 14th. Whoa. Isn't that weird? That is weird. I don't know what that means. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they made it out of order, but yeah. I know Nathan Fillion loved this show. It's the same as like the best experience he's ever had on set. He replayed the character, or he dressed up as him in a show of um, one, one of the recent shows he was on. I can't remember what it was. He dressed up as Nathan. He dressed up as the yeah. The, Hmm. For Halloween episode. So anyway, uh, to go back to a few things, um, Joss Whedon intended the show to have a run for seven seasons. Oh, wow. Um, that would have been awesome. While there were low ratings at first, the real reason it was canceled was that the Fox executives thought it was too dark. Uh, huh. Joss Whedon and the cast refused to change the storyline, so Fox canceled it after only 11 episodes out of 14 airing on the network. Prior to the cancellation, fans formed a Firefly immediate assistance campaign, which huh. involves uh, sending in postcards to the Fox network to support the production of the show. After that failed, the campaign worked on another uh, on getting another network such as UPN to pick up the series for a second season. The campaign ended up being unsuccessful in securing the continuation of the show. Um, so a lot of people started what was known as the brown coats, which was the, you know, what basically the uh, Firefly people were and everything. Yeah. And they, and I remember there was like a big website that had brown coats all over it. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, do you remember that at all? Like, I done this before I got into it. Oh, okay. So you knew about that beforehand. I'm yeah. guessing one of your friends, like Gary, was a brown coat. Um, probably. They just I didn't. I didn't even know about it until the, I watched the show. And people were like, oh, so yeah. like a lot of this pop culture that came up around it, I was a very late comer to, but I absolutely adored the show. Uh, huh. I think it, um, this is her. Uh, during the DVD commentary, it is mentioned that there was a subplot for Inara that was never developed, but that was foreshadowed with the number of shots and or lines during the series. At a 2008 uh, Dragon Con panel, Morena Baccarin, I think, is that how you say her name? Baccarin? Yeah. Confirmed the longstanding rumor that the subplot would be involved that Inara having a terminal illness. Um, Ooh. I did not I can sort of see that now like now that I'm thinking about it mm -hmm. so that would have been an interesting thing I guess a little bit of drama there you know I always thought there was a like a very big like would they would wouldn't they kind of relationship between her and Mal mm -hmm. um, but hmm uh okay hold on so this is the last thing I'll read. Uh, what? Hold on. Uh, uh, okay, this is not... Okay. Uh, this I, I don't know if I should read this or not, because this is very um, graphic. Um, Why not? Probably not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that. Um, because there was some stuff that was that would have been very graphic on the show that I'm glad they they the studios next because they didn't want to see that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know, Joss. So to go into the thing I was telling you earlier, Joss has Joss Whedon. I know you've heard some stuff, right? About Joss. Mm. No. No. Well, Joss has been getting a lot of trouble because uh, on the set of Justice League and apparently on many other sets and nobody's nobody else has ever come forward. Um, he was very rude and abusive to his cast members Ooh. and crew, you know, and he would uh, he would typically yell at them and he would uh, treat them like badly or whatever. 
and he's gotten into a lot of trouble and a lot of uh, actors and, and people that are coming coming on board saying some stuff like saying Joss is not somebody to be trusted, not somebody, you know, uh, he's he's just very abusive. And he mm-hmm. um, and so on the set of Firefly, uh, apparently he made all the he liked to make the female writers, the women writers uh, cry. Uh, <laughs> And when I heard that recently, I was like, oh, that sucks. Cause I really liked the dude at first. Now that I keep hearing all these like nasty things, it's, it's hard to set. Sometimes it's hard to separate the art from the artist because. Oh yeah, it sure is. Because when you're looking at who the person is, you know, if they're despicable scum, you know, mm-hmm. um, it, it's hard for you to go, oh man, I, I, I love, I still love his stuff, you know? Yes. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so he liked he he was very happy. He would tell people he was very happy to make them cry. And that makes me sad. When I heard yeah, me that. too. However, Alan Tudyk has gone on. Uh, the guy who played Wash has gone on to say he never uh, he never had a bad experience on set for Firefly. Um, and so he doesn't understand. And he's known Joss for 17 years and he's never he's never saw that side of him. So Mm -hmm. maybe Firefly, the show with the cast, maybe he was a little bit different, you know, Um, I don't know. Um, And I and I'm not here to judge. I'm just stating that it's rough to kind of a lot of people might not like even want to listen to the show because they don't like who Joss is, you know, they don't want to listen to this episode because they don't want to support Firefly because of that and that always sucks because you know a lot of people work their butt off to make this a good show right um but in the same sense i always view it as well you know they didn't know probably that because you know that joss was this person that he that Mm -hmm. then he's kind of gotten into now um i'm hoping he changes his ways and yeah he makes something and he's learned that he can't be abusive and he can't treat people the way he does and and maybe he'll you know maybe maybe this will be a good thing for him um and uh he'll come back on top you know Mm -hmm. but there are probably some people that don't want him to you know so Mm -hmm. i don't know i can't i can't say anything all i can say is i i loved him you know since buffy uh since Mm -hmm. i first watched buffy and figure out who this guy was so big thing yeah, I don't remember. I watched Buffy when I was in Texas a lot with a buddy of mine when we were on a business trip. His daughter loved the show, and so he was he started watching, and I didn't have nothing else to do, so we go, you know, him we watch Buffy. <laughs> and then um, one of my friends was hooked on Dollhouse, but Firefly was the best one for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I Buffy is my favorite. Uh, Firefly's mm-hmm. my second. Uh, Angel's my third. And mm-hmm. Dollhouse is probably like my la- least favorite. And it's interesting that my, you know, I like Firefly more than Dollhouse, even though Firefly got less of a season than Dollhouse. Right. I just felt like Dollhouse was sort of, um, I don't know. I felt like Dollhouse was sort of a, a boring show in a way. Like it, it didn't. Like I would have rather he had done a comic called Frey, and I would have oh. rather that have been what Liza Kadushku was, uh, you know, on. But I think maybe the problem is that people would have considered it too much like her character in um, uh, her character in uh, Buffy, because her character in Buffy was, you know, right. Um, but anyway, I would have rather seen Frey, which was a great comic and uh, much more fun. <clears throat> then yeah then this i don't know if you heard of that or not but it's a i had not it's set in the buffy universe basically but years years in the future where vampires are still being slayed by a slayer you know oh you know so it was just like a continuation of buffy and i don't know if that might have been the reason it can't be made is because you know they didn't have the rights to to that universe or something you know mm-hmm but I would have liked to see that. I think some people may yeah. like 
little <laughs> fan videos or something. And I bet there, I bet there's Firefly fan films. You know, I'm sure there are. Um, biggest problem with doing that is you need a little bit of a budget or at least a little bit of a set. Yeah. To, to do, you know, it to do it right. You know. Um, but I don't know. I have a friend of mine who does uh who does you know fan films all the time, and maybe I'll suggest a Firefly fan film. Yeah, too. that'd be good. Yeah, I mean, maybe he'll do it, but most likely he'll be like, I need money <laughs> to do that. Yeah, of course. And that's the problem of fan films is money, you know? Yes. You know, so, but that's the thing. Like, people really care about the show. Like, as was said, they tried to tried to get to get a continuation. And Fox just, I mean, Fox isn't about... Like I mean, I'm surprised they got this the the the, the movie, you know, uh-huh. or whatever, you know. Like I'm surprised that happened. Um, you know, we didn't get a Veronica Mars sequel <laughs> until they did a no. Kickstarter. Maybe Joss Whedon could have done a Kickstarter and got a, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That would have been, that probably would have worked. Yeah, uh, I guarantee you, all the all the people who love the show and would donate. You know, to that. Um, mm-hmm. I never saw, well, I saw the Veronica Mars movie, and honestly, it was okay. Um, it, it wasn't, the problem with that show was it was great as a show, but mm-hmm. it didn't have the feeling of a movie, you know? So when you do a movie version of a TV show, it still feels like just a long version of the show. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Like it, right. didn't, it didn't feel like a movie, and and movies and TV shows are definitely two different species these days. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. That's just how I felt. Um, right. And maybe it was. Maybe it was like I don't know an added thing for it. I, I was not really that into Veronica Mars to begin with. Um, I don't know if you were or not. I didn't get into it. <laughs> There's a lot of TV shows out there, dude. There are. I didn't watch some of them. <laughs> yep. And we'll be talking more about them in a couple of seasons. But uh, so I guess we could wrap this up now. You know? All right. right? Are you okay with that? Yes. Yeah, cool. Is there anything more that you want to add to Firefly? Um, I just. I'm going to watch it again because um, I want to have it. It's good. You know, I've been watching the series, like waiting for you to watch it again. It's almost new. Right. I forget a lot of it, and um, I'm looking forward to watching it again with new eyes and see the episodes for a second time. We only watched them all once, you know, because a show that's that's good, I don't want to ruin it. You know, keep watching it and know it by heart. Yeah, you know, some stuff I really like to watch and and really enjoy it. Exactly. Um, and we'll maybe we'll touch up on something. We'll go into more detail for like a bonus episode or something. Sounds great. I would you love know? that. Yeah, we'll this, do like this a... year's been wacky. It's hard to get back, trying to get back into my podcasting skills and getting back balancing life, the universe, and everything. And, and All right, bonus would be great. I'll tell you this: we'll do a bonus one for our Patreon folks. So, out there listening, if you want to be a Patreon member, uh, just give us a dollar, and uh, we'll put this we'll put this episode out uh, sometime next year, early next year. And uh, you guys can all listen to us do a uh, bonus episode where we go into more detail about the show with, uh, you know, after wa- rewatching the episodes and, and talking more about it. Have Joe with us too. Yeah, I don't think so. Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> he just, he hadn't, um, he just didn't have, he doesn't have time to like fully oh. rewatch a whole new show. <laughs> and so he okay. told me. Um, that's what he's been going through. So maybe, I mean, I, I just, I don't think so. But I okay. think you and I will definitely do one if we don't yeah. have him there with us. Um, and we'll get it for our patrons. So it, uh, $1, you can become a patron. Just go to patreon.com backslash Indie Film Cafe and you can hear, you'll be able to hear more bonus content. Uh, we already do, uh, Paul and I already do bonus content there. And, uh, and we're going to have it where, uh, we have buttons, and we're gonna have giveaways coming up soon. So, oh, nice! Yeah, oh, so we're gonna be giving out, uh, giving away free 
Dollar Tree DVDs that we have, and we'll be sending them off to whoever uh, you know, whoever signs up. We'll put uh, we're gonna do like um uh what is it uh, we're gonna do a uh, uh put them in a pile and pick the uh, pick a name and everything. Oh, nice. so, yeah, so there you go. Um, so but we need we need to get a few more you know a few more people joining our patrons to to do that and so please if you uh if you sign up we'll put your name in a pile and you'll be able to possibly win a uh, giveaway coming up all right um so with that being said thank you so much um this this has been awesome i really appreciate you coming on uh, coming on here and talking with us or talking with me (laughs) i always enjoy it john i always do i always do too um so uh this will be up on monday great oh yep and everybody who's been listening thank you guys so much for checking this out hope you guys enjoyed it and uh tune in next year where it's gonna be may that we'll come back but if you go to that patreon we'll have it before then for another episode so bonus bonus episode coming up you don't want to miss that Maybe we'll do more of those if we can. Yeah, you know? I like that. Well, we'll do more bonus content for you guys. Uh, just let us know if you guys, uh, you know, want to hear more stuff. Sorry, this wasn't as, you know, we. it's just been a busy end of the year for all of us. We just, we're going to make sure we got it in, though. <laughs> yep, definitely. All right, well, thank you so much. And Thank you, everybody. Jonathan, so much for having me. It's yep, a uh, you, you, you stick around for a second. I'm going to talk to you for a second, but everybody else, Thank you, guys. Hope you guys have a good one. And uh, see you guys next year. See ya. You're listening to the Hollywood Boulevard Podcast. 